Welcome to Shrikecast, where IT training is free for everyone. My name is Andrew Krauthammel, and today we are going to go over a sonic wall feature in the latest 5.8 firmware uh, for the newer uh, sonic wall devices. Uh, I believe it's for the TZ210 and up, possibly the NSA240 and up. Uh, don't quote me on that, but it's somewhere around that range. Called GeoIP. It's an add on feature to the security services for those higher level devices and we can block certain countries from sending uh, traffic to us from those countries or replies to those countries so we can block both directions. Uh, it's a very nice way to limit your exposure on the internet uh, very granularly if you wish per country. So a little history though. Uh, the way we used to do this uh, is by going to IANA, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority. These are the guys who control the address space for uh, IP addresses. And I'm, I'm going to use the IPv4 address space for, for today. We're not going to get into v6. But we have these regional uh, address uh, registries. Aaron, Lacknick, Afrinic, Ripe, Apnic, as you see here and each of those have blocks of addresses. So IANA doles out those blocks of addresses, various slash eight uh, networks to these guys. They then give that out to the different uh, uh, the different countries and the different providers that, uh, that request it. So what, the way we used to do this was we'd go check out the address space and find out what blocks are assigned to what regions and what countries. So what we can do is go down to where we are at, iana.org slash numbers, very useful site. And if we go check out the IPv4 address space, it'll give us a nice simple breakdown as to who owns what slash 8 network in IPv4 land. So you can see there's a lot of old stuff in here. Um, some of these guys have had their blocks of addresses since the beginnings of the internet such as Xerox is a good one, or AT&T. Uh, we've got, who's in some other old guys here? If we dig through, there's the DoD back in 95. There's a lot of real old ones in here. But you also see that there's some that say Aaron or Ripe or Apnic at the bottom there. So what you can do is sort our designation, and it'll say who it's administered by. So not only are some of them back in the day given out to certain companies before they realized that we were going to run out of addresses very, very quickly, uh, but most of them are, are given out to these regional registry uh, groups. So what we can do is find out, okay, the, the 154 dot something, that, that whole block, is owned by Afrinic. Same with this block and this block and this block. Here's all the ones that are administered by Aaron. So these are all the ones that are in North America in some fashion. There's Lacnix, so that's um, Latin America and South America. Ripe, which is Europe. Here's all the blocks of addresses. 141.0.0.0, 145.000. You can go through all these lists and find out which ones uh, you don't want traffic to be sent to and from. So the old method was you would find out what blocks you don't want traffic to or from. Let's say your business that you are in charge of uh, only does business within the United States. So there's no reason to communicate to anyone else on the internet. You're going to use the internet to get around the United States to communicate with your various other companies you work with and your customers in the US, but there's a really good chance you're not going to have any need to contact anyone outside of the US. So what we can do is just block out all of the other countries. So what you would go do is find out all of the Aaron addresses, and then you could allow all traffic from these addresses and block everything else. Uh, or you could specifically block each block of addresses and then just have a, a default allow coming in. So that depends how you want to do it. But you could block them out in this way based on slash eights problem with that is is that there's a whole bunch of them. It gets kind of tiresome to make all these firewall rules and try to uh, make some super net uh, firewall rules and things like that. So uh, there's some nice feature now in SonicWall where we can say, here's the countries I want to do business with. You click some checkboxes and everything's, everything's done. You don't have to go through 
all of this and make your own firewall rules based on all these different blocks of addresses and figure out which ones are, are based where. And there's Apple, 1992. So we're going to go back to our sonic wall. I'm on an NSA 240 here. And I have a neat way now of uh, being able to configure these devices remotely. Thank you, sonic wall. So you guys can follow along on the live demo or your own devices. I now have a series of devices I can configure here. We're going to go to Security Services, Geo IP Filter. And then here we are. We have a series of countries that we can select. So what we were going to do is we can say block connections to and from the following countries. We're going to, for in this example, block incoming and outgoing all traffic to these countries. If you select firewall rule base, you can then go make firewall rules for these countries uh, and uh, decide on you know what traffic you want to go to to block and what, what traffic you want to come in. Um, you know you can get granular with it. Probably, I would expect the majority of you are going if you have simple needs are, are going to just say all because you know what are the odds of you needing to do business with Algeria for example so what we can also do is enable logging if you want to be alerted in your system log in the sonic wall of every time that something is dropped thanks to the GOIP filter uh, you can check off that but most likely you're not going to care so uh, unless you're debugging something, then you could go in and turn it on and, and figure out, oh, that's why my traffic's being dropped. But otherwise, I would probably leave that off so that your syslogs aren't filled with tons of drop messages based on uh, the GOIP filter, and then only turn it on when you have to. Uh, probably very useful for those who collect your syslogs and actually uh, do work with it in some fashion. So what we can do is check off the countries that we want. So let's say we don't want traffic to or from Afghanistan and Andorra, and we can go down and say, I don't want Malaysia and Mongolia. You can get out very, very specific here. This is, a, this is a really nice feature that it's not just, I don't want traffic from Europe or I don't want tra traffic from APNIC and with some of those regional groups but we can specifically say per country. It's been broken down in a database out there uh, that they maintain of who, what country owns what pieces of which blocks. You can get very nice and granular. But at the same time, you can block entire countries. It's very useful. Uh, so you can choose your specific countries that you want to block and then just say OK uh, and accept the changes. Or we can check off all of them. Now, if we go ahead and do this, we're going to block ourselves from our own firewall. So it would be advisable to go deselect the country that you're accessing your own sonic wall from if you're doing it remotely, as I am here, and then also remove the countries that you might do business with. So let's say we do business with the U.S., the other outlying islands maybe, uh, and the United Kingdom, and let's say uh, like Germany. How about that? So we'll go deselect Germany. There we go. So everyone else is blocked except the United States and its various outlying uh, outlying islands and, and whatnot. The UK and oh oh let's let's do Canada too. Forgot about Canada. Sorry Canada. Um, and let's do let's do India. I don't want to offend the third of you out there who come from India. <laughs> so there we go. We'll unblock India too. Uh, so we can go ahead and just click accept. That now applies that in the IP filter, and now all these countries are blocked. So if anyone tries to access my Sonical now from any of these countries that are checked off, they immediately get dropped. They don't get processed by anything. This is really nice because uh, also if you're getting uh, denial of service by somebody or you're getting just a lot of weird hacking attempts from China, for example, or any other locations, Eastern, um, uh, Eastern Europe, anything anywhere like that uh, you can block that off without having it to go through your the rest of your security services so this will block it before it gets through to your intrusion prevention system and your anti-spyware system 
and it's going to save you resources so your CPU is not caught up trying to uh, to process all that through the advanced intrusion prevention rules if it's coming from an IP address that you don't care about in the first place. So th this really, really makes things much, much nicer for you. So uh, the other thing you can do is create an exclusion group if you want. Uh, so this is why I said most likely you guys are going to probably select the all up at the top uh, because we can say make a group of, of objects and then each object could be you know certain servers out there in the, in these countries that we're blocking and exclude them so uh, you know if we had for some reason a server in Albania that we need to receive traffic from but we don't want to open up the rest of Albania well then we can go in and just add an exclusion group and, and make an object for that Albanian server and then he's he's allowed in uh, so that's that's a nice feature at the bottom as well uh, you do need to have DNS uh, able and running on your uh, on your sonic wall, uh, which is why they have this little test here uh, as well. But the GeoIP database works off of a DNS-based uh, server uh, at SonicWall, so you're, you're going to want to make sure DNS is working. Most likely, it already is, but just so you know. Uh, and then we can look up an IP address uh, and and test it as well. So what we could do is uh, let's, well, let's do Google, why not? 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. So that's Google's DNS server, one of the publicly available ones. We'll go check him out. And this will reference that GeoIP database for us. And there we go. It's in the US. It's not an evil botnet. Everything good checks out, so that'll be allowed through our firewall. And that's pretty it for pretty much it for GeoIP. Um, you can get a little bit fancier, like I mentioned, with the firewall rules, but for most of everyone, uh, this is pretty much what you're going to do, is block everything, uncheck a few countries that you want to do business with, and now you've simplified your threats out there uh, down to at least just a few countries. Uh, and hopefully we'll get rid of a lot of uh, botnets out there that are attacking you, because they might be distributed, who knows where, across the different countries of the world. Well, now 90% of them are blocked for you, uh, right off the bat. So, uh, if you enjoyed this, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And I will have another video uh, probably two Wednesdays from now, because I am headed uh, out again uh, way next Wednesday. So, look forward to that after I come back. And thank you for watching.